Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. Amen. So good to see each of you here this morning. A very happy new year to you. This first Sunday of the year, um, Crystal Springs Methodist Church, it is so good to be here with you. I have several announcements to bring to your attention. First of all, Divorce Care will begin today at 3 in the conference room. If you or someone you know is separated and or divorced and would find this helpful, and trust me, you would find this helpful, um, you, it's not too late to sign up for that. It's not too late to just show up. Um, but uh, there is a QR code that you could scan real quick and send that to somebody or sign up yourself today at 3 o'clock. It's a 13-week series. We'll take one Sunday off because it ends actually on Easter Sunday. So we're not going to do that. We're going to uh, end on the following Sunday. But that is coming up beginning today. Please be in prayer for us and for that whole series. Wednesday night activities are beginning again this Wednesday, which means that Wednesday night suppers are beginning again. This Wednesday starts at 5.30 and then the various classes at 6 or 6.15, depending on um, what class you're going to. Before you... Um, in the back of the pews is a greeting card. If you are visiting with us, feel free to fill out as much or as little information as you are comfortable with and put that in the offering plate when it comes around. Today is a special day in the life of the church. It's a day when historically um, Methodist churches, Wesleyan churches, have gone through what is called the Wesleyan Covenant Renewal Service. And that is what we will be doing today. And you will see scattered throughout the service, there are various readings. Um, If you're unfamiliar with the readings and the way this works, if it's in bold, that's your part. If it's light, that's probably my part. So no critiquing on how well I did on my part. You just focus on your part and when you're supposed to come in. Um, But that is what we are doing today. And so we begin with this prayer. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. If we're going to have technical difficulties, let's go ahead and have it at the beginning and get it out of the way. I've got no problems with that. So we're going to have a lot of fun today, Jana, if this doesn't work out. Is it coming? Okay. Is it behind me now? Let's start over. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Amen.
I invite you to rise now in body or in spirit as we join together in our call to worship. Creative God, you make all things new in heaven and on earth. Come to you in a new year with new desires and old fears, new decisions and old controversies, new dreams and old weaknesses. Because you are a God of hope, we know that you create all the possibilities of the future. Because you are a God of love, we know that you accept all the mistakes of the past. Because you are the God of our faith, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and praise. We come into your presence with gladness and a joyful noise, and we serve and bless you. Amen. Amen. Let us sing him, O oh God, our help in ages past. I wouldn't tell you the number, it wouldn't do you any good. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's so nice to see so many people here this morning. Um, all kiddos, come on down. And I just want to say, Nora, come over here. Nora's acolyting by herself today. She did such a wonderful job this morning, didn't she? Yes. Hey, Hard. I'm so glad to see you guys. Hi, Lukey. All right, so this is called The Best Medicine. Proverbs 17.22 says, A happy heart is like good medicine. Whether you giggle, tee-hee, or guffaw, laughter is one language that everyone speaks. You don't have to learn how to laugh either. It's a skill you're born with. Babies start to laugh when they're only about three months old, long before they learn to say mama or dada. Real laughter is one of those things that just happens. Something seems funny, and before you could even think that's funny, your brain has you laughing. 
but you can't make yourself really laugh. All right, can you guys try to make yourselves like genuinely laugh? <laughs> you try. Yeah, you try. That's it. You're trying, sister. You're trying. Yeah, it's hard to do. Well, now you're really laughing because you sound silly, right? So laughter is contagious. So if you hear someone laughing, chances are you'll soon be laughing too. Some people even claim laughter can heal you like medicine. Scientists aren't sure about that, but we do know that laughter is fun. It helps you to make friends and it helps you to make, feel good inside. Laughter is a gift from who? God. That's right. Laughter is a gift from God. It heals our heart and gives us joy. God even tells us there's a time to laugh. But there's a huge difference between laughing with someone and laughing at someone, right? Yes, we don't want to do that. Don't use laughter like a weapon to hurt others or to tear them down. Always try to treat others the way you want them to treat you, right? That's what it says in the Bible. And nobody likes to be laughed at. Laughter is a gift and it's meant to be shared. A funny story and a good laugh might just be the medicine a friend needs during a tough day. Remember, words and actions, yes, even laughter, should always be loving and kind. And that's nothing to joke about. Can you guys do that? Be kind to your friends always? I know it. All right. So we're going to read How Great. There's nothing like a tickle fight to get the laughter and giggles going. But here's a question. Can you tickle yourself? As it turns out, the answer is no. A big part of the reason you laugh when tickled is because you're surprised. If you try to tickle yourself, your brain knows what's coming. You're not surprised, so you're not tickled. That is very interesting. I bet a lot of people today are going to go home and try to tickle themselves and see if it works. It's not going to work. You're not going to be surprised. It's, you're trying right now. It's not working. <laughs> All right. Pray with me. Lord, thank you for the gift of laughter. Help us to use it in a way that makes you smile and brings the joy you've given us to others. So now we're going to add to this sweet little prayer that Marley just said as part of our covenant renewal service, okay? Father God, searcher of all of our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. See?
Thank you, Nick. Let's join together now in the litany of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks for all of God's mercies. O God, our covenant friend, you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and this place. We praise your holy name, O God. You have given us life and reason and set us in a world filled with your glory. You have comforted us with family and friends and ministered to us through the hands of our sisters and brothers. Praise your holy name, O God. You have filled our hearts with a hunger after you and have given us your peace. You have redeemed us and called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have given us a place in the fellowship of your spirit and the witness of your church. We praise your holy name, O God. You have been our light in darkness and a rock of strength in adversity and temptation. You have been the very spirit of joy in our joys and the all-sufficient reward in all our labors. We praise your holy name, O God. You remembered us when we forgot you. You followed us even when we tried to flee from you. You met us with forgiveness when we returned to you. For all your patience and overflowing grace, we praise your holy name, O God. Now let us join together in this hymn that was written specifically for this service by Charles Wesley. Come, let us use the grace divine. Let us pray. 
O oh God, we bring to you now your tithes and our offerings. We ask that you will take and use these for the advancement of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Be seated. Scripture this morning is taken from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. Listen now for the word of the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. And I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was asked about my sermon this morning uh, by one of my children, and I said, well, I'm, I, I'm actually not preaching today. And then I thought about that for a minute and said, well, maybe just a little bit. And I might not would have, but I've got a story to tell because this week I tried to take some time off. I didn't take a, the whole week off, but took a little time off here and there. And in one of the days when I was taking some time off, the kids and I were in the backyard playing football. 
Now, you've got to understand how we play football. We don't play, first of all, with football, football. I mean, we were playing with a football, but here's how it works. I'm the full-time quarterback. And, and I'm the full-time quarterback because I made the rule that I'm the full-time quarterback. <laughs> because that's what I like to do. I don't, you know, all this other stuff I don't like to do. And, well, the way that we had it arranged was my oldest, Isaac, was on one team. And then Caroline and Levi were on another team. And Katie too, had too much sense for this, and she said, y'all go ahead and hurt yourselves. I'm going to stay inside and read a book. But we're out there playing, and, and Caroline and Levi are in the lead. And Isaac and I are at, was it third and goal or something to that effect? And he, we've got a play. Now, Nick, I came up with the play. I don't know that the play is legal, but the play was that Isaac's going to hike the ball to me, and then he's going to go just a little ways. I'm going to throw the ball to him. He's going to turn and throw the ball to me, and then I'm going to run and make the touchdown. By the way, the touchdown is the privacy fence. You've got to touch the fence. So this is the play. We're third and goal. Should we wait till fourth down? No, let's go. Yeah, let's wait. No, no, at the last minute I go, let's do it now. Okay, so we do it now. The play goes exactly as planned until about eight feet from the fence. At which point, I think Caroline tags me. This is two-hand touch. This is not tackle football. She tags me. Now, Laurie, whether she tagged me or pushed me, we don't know. But what I do know is that I lost my balance and my 52-year-old self went head first into the fence. I took a piece of the fence out. I landed wonky on my arm. I have no idea. Poor Levi thinks I have died. And as I'm laying there, I'm like, Go get your mother so they know I'm not dead, but they think I might be hurt. I don't know if I've broken anything. I have no idea, but I'm sprawled out there. My head is bleeding. I've got the little spot to prove it. I don't, there are other parts of me bleeding I didn't know yet, but I'm there. But if there's one thing that you can't say is that I was uncommitted. The Wesleyan Covenant Renewal Service that John Wesley put together a few hundred years, a couple hundred years ago, is about being committed. This is, this is a statement that you're making and that I'm making as we gather at the beginning of the year. That's the point, is that we gather at the beginning of the year and we say, this is who we are And this is who God is. And this is my commitment to God, receiving God's commitment to me. And and you you know, if you if you said to me, well, actually what you're doing is you're taking the Sunday off, you're just reading a bunch of stuff, and we're reading a bunch of stuff, and and you can take it that way if you want. It doesn't matter to me. I was hoping to be off this past week. I was hoping to be camping. So it would have worked out really well if that had been the case. And I might not have gone head first into a fence, but I would have done this because for each of us, we are saying this is our commitment. We join our voices together and we commit to God and say, God, yes, we know the year that's passed. And it's a great year and it was a year that wasn't so great. There were times when it all went well and there's times where it all, well, let's just be honest, it seemed to go to hell in a handbasket. But we start this year, and it's just the turning of the calendar. It doesn't mean anything except for the fact that it is an opportunity for us to stop and go, okay, God, thank you for being committed to me. Now, these are my commitments that I make to you. So I invite you into this service.
Because brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today, however, we meet as the generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. Hear the invitation. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and our interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ and pray. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own, I will give up myself to your will in all things. Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these admonitions. First, Set apart some time, more than once, to be spent alone before the Lord and seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you and carefully thinking through all the conditions of the covenant and searching your hearts whether you have already freely given your life to Christ. Consider what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are, and whether you, after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy law, awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. 
rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. You have opened your mouths to the Lord and you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. And last, be then prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall down on your knees. Lift your hands toward heaven. Open your hearts to the Lord as we pray. Well, now is a moment of a little bit of chaos because this committing yourselves to the Lord as we pray, opening your hearts to the Lord as we pray, I'm going to give you two options. There's a third, but you don't want to take it. The, The first option is you can come to the altar now and kneel and pray. We're going to have just a time of where the altar is open. You can come and kneel and pray. If you would rather pray at your seat where you are, you can bow there and pray. You can even turn around, get down on your knees and and put your head on the cushion and pray. It doesn't matter. That's fine. What's the third option? Well, you cannot pray at all. But I'm asking you to commit to one of the two options and I'm going to begin now by going down and praying. The altar is open.
Let us join together now in the covenant prayer. A righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness and not having done your will. For you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you shall put away all your idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart, renounce them all covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch all temptations that will lead me away from you, for my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be your God again, if you would let him. Before all heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body and soul, as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means of coming to God. Jesus, I do here on bended knees accept Christ as the only new and living way and sincerely join myself in a covenant with him. O blessed Jesus, I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. I do here, with all my power, accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own worthiness, and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do here covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death shall part from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I do here willingly put my neck under your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction and not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows your heart. O oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without guile or reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide me and help me to set it aright. And now glory be to you, O oh God the Father, who I from this day forward shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory be to you, O God the Son, who have loved me and washed me and my sins in your own blood, and now is my Savior and Redeemer, glory be to you, O God the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. O mighty God, 
the Lord Omnipotent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it, and let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. I invite you to stand now as we sing our closing hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. I'll need a little help every now and then. That's all right. Thank you, buddy. She's doing pretty awesome to be trying to do all this all by herself. Thank you, Nora. <laughs> Receive now the benediction. You've made this covenant and this promise to God. And now we have an opportunity to go and to live in that full and whole life that Christ has promised to us. So I invite you to go now and to be the church. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord Amen. Yeah.